President Nkurunziza has launched a campaign to promote a referendum to change the constitution that could see him, uh, uh, of course, rule until 2034. The government adopted a plan back in October to revise the constitution that, if passed by the referendum, would allow Nkurunziza to uh, serve another two seven-year terms from 2020. Publisher Inside Africa, uh, Inside Inside Watch Africa, Lua Shei Adeyemo joins us now in the studio to talk more about this. Thank you very much indeed for coming. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, beyond um, instituting or trying to um, come up with a referendum, he has gone further to threaten that anyone who scuttles this process, in his words, it will be a red line. Why the desperation? I mean, it's obvious. Um, in 2015, when he was meant to have left office, he decided to seek a third term in office. And up till now, truth of the matter is, he forced and twisted the hands of the world, in my opinion, and he was elected in for the third term, claiming that his first term was not a term because he was sort of nominated into the office. Now the question is, so what has he brought to the table? I, I hate to always go back to the fact that a lot of African leaders don't understand what leadership ought to be, and that's why they're always clamoring to go into office and to what extent or to what do you bring to the table at the end of the day? Okay, we, we shouldn't give up on the, on the Burundians just yet. Perhaps something, they have something in stock for the president this time around. Something even fiercer than what we witnessed in 2015. Uh, truth is, um, it, it is not fair on the people that they have to kill themselves and be maimed and be arrested and be molested. Um, a lot of accusation for sex, uh, 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 violences all over the place. I think it's unfair that each time we need to get anything in Africa, we always have to go through that route. As we speak today, the world is impressing it on Nkuruziza. Paris, uh, Global um, um, Associations, UN, and a host of them are still saying to him, Sir, this is not the way to go about this. But unfortunately, because as a president of his nation, he has right and he cannot be forced out. That is why he's still sitting in But what in can the world now. do differently? Is out of uh, ICC as we speak. There was a call by the UN to look into some criminal cases. I mean, the, the issue of uh, 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 war crimes uh, years back and even just recently. And nothing has been done. What can the world do differently this time? I, I think the solution, and I think we need to take seriously, is, is the people of the land. And I, and I, and I I want to be very clear about that because it's not something that we need to toil with because we're talking about our lives here. We need to start to set standard for the caliber and the quality of leaders that end up leading us because if you have the wrong people who do not understand the primary duty of, lead, uh, of leadership, then you'll have people who will want to seat perpetually in office without delivering anything. Look, the neighbors of Burundians are Rwandans. All right. And, okay. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, in 2015, his bid to remain in office and plunged the country into turmoil. Are we likely? To, are we not likely to see a repeat of you know what what happened in 2015? No. As we speak, they're still suffering from the 2015 thing. The thing is not on. It's not like it is completely out. Poverty has increased. It is. No, in really? terms of violence, I'm talking in terms of violence. Everything is strong together. Violence is still on. People have been arrested on a daily basis. And he just said it, that if you talk, not just do, mm. if you by any chance say anything, I've drawn a red line and I will arrest you. I'll take you out. That is enough to tell the world that, we're, we're, I mean, that place is in a very, very dire state. But it, it, uh, it's not just in Kuziza alone. Don't forget that uh, Museveni also had a similar issue wanting to seek a re-election. Perhaps uh, the Mugabe action will be a repeat of what we would expect in some other African countries. What do you think? That, maybe that's one of the solutions, but I would always go back to the fact that as a people, we need to be more firm at the caliber and the quality of people that we, that we um, eventually vote into office. Because yes, the Mugabe thing, I mean, yes, we've started another phase, but the truth of the matter is the person who is on set right now was the vice president of Mugabe. I mean, the truth is, are we saying that the way, I mean, as much as the Zambians are, we don't have anyone there that could do the, the job. Yes, and Bambuans that could do the jobs. I mean, it's, it's worrisome for Africa that um, we keep, you know, turning this around and the essence of leadership is not gotten and nobody is questioning that because right. I think we should take it from the results we get from them. All right, Oluwashi, I'm, I'm wondering, where is 
the role of the opposition in O'Hare. Have we got a very weakened opposition in Zimbabwe that you remember what happened during the Abbasanjo you know, era here as well? It was because we had a very stout you know, opposition was the reason that it didn't fly you know, with the people. Are we, is the opposition too weak? You know, in your opinion, to uh, you know, ensure that Nkurunziza does not, does not succeed. All right, you've just struck a chord. I've always wondered why we do not copy the way the British run their opposition. Now, the way they run their opposition is very simple and straight. You have the leader of the opposition running like a, you know, like a shadow cabinet, as it were. So every time mm. Theresa May makes a mistake, mm. the, the leader of Labour Party is on it. On our case. She was defeated in parliament just yesterday. That's, that's, mm -hmm. You see, that's the way it works. Now, so when you say opposition, the man is out there, he's pursuing a host of things, he's trying to feed his family, and you call him opposition. He's not an opposition. If we're really serious, uh, serious about opposition in Africa, we need to find a way where the oppositions have power, like they do in the UK. Then you will have proper opposition. Perhaps Those... you start that crusade here in Nigeria. What do you think? I, I mean, for me, some of the things we're writing and talking about are that. If, if, you see, if you don't have the right structure, don't expect any result other than what we're getting right now. What we have right now is a joke. That's the truth. All right, then. Uh, Oluwa <laughs> Shei, Adeyemo, publisher, Inside Watch Africa. Well, thank you very much, as always, coming to share your thoughts with us. Thank you so thank much you. for having me. <laughs>